Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's video about the LS2 Vector 2 helmet. We're seeing a growing number of helmets now that meet the new ECE 2206 safety standard and this one from LS2 is among them. It's their Vector 2 sports touring lid which has a fiberglass shell, a good collection of features and costs between 180 and 200 pounds depending on the colour scheme. The shell is made from LS2's HPFC which stands for High Performance Fiber Composite and looking in more detail at the description of HPFC and also from weighing this helmet I think we can safely simplify that and we can just say this shell is made from fiberglass. This Vector 2, which is a size medium, weighs in on our scales at 1635 grams. That's about right for a helmet with a fiberglass shell, as to get much lighter, the shell needs to have layers of different fibres in there to bring the weight down. But having spent a couple of hundred miles wearing this helmet on the road, the weight didn't once cause me any problems. One of the benefits of a fibre shell like this is generally the ability to have more vents than you find on helmets with plastic shells, and this helmet lives up to that. There are two vents on the chin, the bottom one, uncovers a series of holes at the base of the chin bar to let air flow directly through and then the top vent is designed to allow air to flow up through the top of the chin bar to the inner surface of the visor but poking around in there with the torch suggests there's not really an easy route for that air to get through to the chin bar and then onto the visor on the road i didn't find either vent to really make a noticeable difference to the amount of air that was coming through to the inside of the lid the top two vents operate on these switches here and they allow air down to the interior where there are channels in the eps impact liner that allow air to flow to the two exhaust vents at the rear of the helmet. Like the chin, I couldn't really tell if these were open, so I'd say they're more about long-term cooling rather than giving you an immediate chilly blast of air. Now the visor, this is one of the features that LS2 make the most noise about with this helmet. It mounts with a quick release system, it takes a bit of getting used to, but it's okay once you've practiced it a few times. The base plates can also move forward and back slightly, and there's a small switch in there to lock them forward, which is shown on LS2's promo video for this helmet. There's nothing in the owner's manual to say that those switches are there, why they're there, or how to use them. Now, I would personally say, if you buy one of these helmets, don't go anywhere near that switch ever. Just leave it in exactly the mode it comes in and everything will be absolutely fine. Using that switch can only really mess it up in my experience. The visor itself has four steps between fully up and fully down. One, two, three, four. On this step, you can leave it open for a bit of airflow. And then on the fifth step, it locks closed. To release it, you need to press the button under the visor to release the lock, and that lets you lift the visor. That visor is protected by a pin lock insert. It's included in the box. It's a max vision insert, so it won't interfere with your vision. And it's a pin lock 120, which is the most protective grade available. It is a little bit more complicated, this visor, in the way it mounts than other visors, but in use, I found it quite good to ride with. Peripheral vision from it's very good, and the visor locking button is something that's found on a growing number of helmets now, so it's quite easy to adapt to. There's also a sun visor behind here. It opens and closes on this switch on the left rim and coverage from that is pretty reasonable. It's not coated to protect against fog, so you'll need to open the main visor a smidge to let some air in and clear that sun visor if it does mist up. Switch into the interior. This is one of the stronger points of this helmet, in my opinion. It's soft, it's supportive, it fits securely into the lid, and it's also got a neat trick of extending around its base here, and this one enveloped my head more than most other helmets do. So I don't normally cover noise in these reviews, but I felt the closer fit around the base of the lid gave this a really good seal around my neck and made this helmet a little bit quieter than most. Behind the cheek pads, there are recesses for intercom speakers and they're big enough for 40 mm Cardo speakers. So I would say most intercom speakers will fit in those recesses. As for fitting the intercom itself, there are a couple of issues to get around. Firstly, there's a plastic trim around the base of the lid and it's quite broad. And that makes it difficult or even impossible really to fit a clamp mount around there. And then this sculpting on the shell means it's a smaller surface to stick an intercom to with a self-adhesive mount, which is really what you'd need to do. I'd say something like an Interphone Ucom 3 would be a good shout as that's quite a small unit, or you could go official and get LS2's Lincoln Ride Pal as that's designed to work with this. But customer reviews on that unit are mixed as a lot of people find the buttons that operate that very fiddly. Lastly, with the interior, it's the fastening strap. It's a micrometric buckle, which has a slider made from metal and it's got a good quality feel. But LS2 do something different to most firms here with their smart tab, which is this bit here. So if you pull it, it just opens the buckle. And if you just let go again, it resecures on the buckle with a magnet to stop that bit flapping around. That does make it easier to use the fastening buckle while you're still wearing your gloves. 
So on to sizing and approvals. The Vector 2 comes in sizes from double extra small up to triple extra large, and that covers head circumferences up to 66 centimetres. And the LS2 have gone to town on shells as well. There are six different shells. The smallest covers helmet sizes double XS and XS, and the biggest covers double XL and triple XL. The other four sizes, so small, medium, large, and XL, all get their own shell, which is both very unusual and very positive. LS2 say this helmet is designed to work with riders with a long oval head shape. So that's people whose head is longer from front to back than it is from side to side. But my head is what's known as a round shape. It's as broad as it is long. And I found this helmet was very comfortable for a whole day of riding. And that's despite my head being the total opposite of the shape that LS2 say this has been designed for. So I wouldn't just assume that it's only for people with long oval heads. For road use, this helmet's approved to the new ECE 2206 standard, which is more demanding than the standard it's replacing. Now, that's not necessarily a guarantee that it's a better helmet than one that meets the outgoing 2205 standard, but it does give added confidence that this will be one of the more protective helmets on the market. If it's racetrack use you're after, then you'll be very pleased to see this. It's the ACU gold sticker on the back of the helmet. Now, in the time I've spent wearing this lid, I found it to be a decent helmet that has a good spec for a very good value price. The venting isn't particularly dramatic and that visor mounting mechanism is a bit overcomplicated in my opinion, but I like everything else about it. That's especially the case as it provides such good value for money. This helmet costs £180 as we record this in plain colours and it's a penny under 200 quid in graphics like this one here. And while we're talking about this colour scheme, LS2 call this white, blue and pink. Now believe what you see, not what you read. This helmet is, I can assure you, definitely white, blue and red. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the LS2 Vector 2 helmet, but if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.